Hey everyone, Steven here at My Life Outdoors. So, John Muir once said, the mountains are calling and I must go. And that's all fine and good as long as the mountains are close by. But what if you get a call from mountains that are too far to drive to? Well, today I'm talking about everything you need to know to fly with your gear. Whether you want to check your gear or carry it on, that's what we're talking about in this video. So. Let's check it out. I'm gonna talk about carry on first and then checking your gear. So if you wanna jump ahead to check gear, then just follow the timestamp on your screen. So by far the hardest part about flying with gear is when you wanna carry on your pack. This is possible, but there are a lot of asterisks attached. One is that carry-on size limits are very restrictive. The average pack that I've carried over the years just won't fit into a 9 by 14 by 22 inch space. Most likely, if you're going to manage to get into those dimensions, it's probably going to be an ultralight, a lightweight, or at the very least a minimalist setup. But then you have other problems. The FAA forbids trekking poles, tent poles, and tent stakes and carry-on luggage, which is going to make it pretty hard to bring the vast majority of shelters available today. So if you're bringing any of these, you're going to have to check those items. Backpacking chairs are not mentioned in FAA restrictions, but they do forbid anything that can be used as a blunt object, which might rule out chairs. This is also the reason why I believe there's a restriction on tent poles, even though I'm not really sure that my ultralight aluminum tent poles could really hurt anybody. So it would be easy to say that there are just too many restrictions to carry on, but I still need to know, and if you're watching this, I'm sure you're curious too, so let's find out. Okay, so I'm all packed up for my Olympic National Park trip, and I've traded out my nice tent poles and stakes for something that I really don't care about, and I've also got a cheap chair that I don't care if they confiscate. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through security and see what happens. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to film any of this, but we'll see. So I just made it through security and my bag got stopped just like I thought I was going to, but it wasn't my tent poles or my tent stakes or my chair. All the things I thought I was going to have a problem with, it was my backpacking stove. For some reason on the x-ray, that thing looked weird to them and they wanted to know what it was. They started opening up my pack, they asked me what it was, I told them what it was and they stopped and said, okay, you can go. So no problem. No problem with backpacking, tent poles, stakes, chair, none of that. So does that mean you should risk it? Well, that's up to you. Hey everyone, future Steven here. I just want to add a couple things. I decided to go ahead and carry on my pack for my flight home as well. And this time I checked my pocket rocket stove because I can actually understand why that looked concerning. But I kept the tent poles, the tent stake, and the chair because, after all, those are the items the FAA specifically says are banned. Once again, my pack got flagged and they wanted to have a look inside, but this time it was my Tokes titanium pot that caught their attention. They opened it up, they took a look inside, and they sent me on my way. So I'm not really sure what was going on there. And I don't know what to tell you about the tent poles. I can't really recommend that you intentionally defy FAA regulations. And if you choose to do so, you may lose a vital part of your expensive gear. So carry on your gear at your own risk. But I at least hope that this helps you when you're planning your next trip. Oh, one more thing that you need to know is that whether you're carrying on or checking your bags, fuel canisters and bear spray are not allowed on a plane at all. So no matter what, you're going to need to buy those when you get to your destination. Checked bags. Now, if you're going to fly with gear, then it's much easier to check your gear because there are far fewer restrictions. You're still not allowed to take cancer fuel or bear spray on a plane, but just about everything else is allowed. The biggest thing that you need to worry about is all the straps hanging off your pack. You don't want to get those snagged on conveyor belts or anything else they might encounter while they're outside your care. So what I've always done is I actually put my pack in a really large duffel bag. So years ago, I actually picked up these large REI pack duffels specifically intended for this purpose. Mine are a little bit older, but you can still pick these up at REI for about $40. They're compact and they're the perfect size to quickly shove your pack in at bag check. And they do a wonderful job of protecting your expensive pack and its straps while they're going through all the conveyor belts. But if you don't want to spend your money on the duffel, I've also heard of people wrapping their packs in a really big trash bag. So 
that works too. Now, if my pack is heavy, I don't really wanna carry it through the airport in a duffel or much less a trash bag. It's much easier to wear my pack just like I normally would on the trail and then just shove it in the duffel at the last minute. I click the packed up duffel on the outside of my pack until I'm in the line for the checked bags and then while I'm waiting my turn, I shove my pack in the duffel. I try to make sure that all the straps are secured and tight and I even fasten the hip belt just to make sure that it's protected. Then I give it to the attendant and I hope that they take good care of it while we're apart. And that's about it for flying with gear. Now, I believe that I did a thorough job of checking what can and can't be taken on a plane, but just in case, you might wanna check the TSA regulations, so I'll put a link to that in the description below. If you found this video informative and helpful, then do me a favor and click the like button. YouTube will show this video to more people if you do. Also, if you like the videos that I'm putting out, then the best way to support me is to simply subscribe if you haven't already. Or you can go to mylifeoutdoors.com store and pick up one of my awesome Take a Seat shirts. Do me a favor and follow me on Instagram at mylifeoutdoors. And as always, thanks for watching.